Hey guys, how's it going today? Joe Lorendi here with Fandemonium. I uh, had a couple weeks off just previous to this, but glad to be back and doing the show once again. We're in that little weird stage where it's May. We haven't exactly gotten to the the OTAs and the training camp. Uh, the draft is over. It's pretty much off time is what we're in right now in the NFL season. So it's pretty much a perfect point to do whatever Talk about whatever. So let's set expectations for 2018 and look back at the roller coaster ride that was 2017. I think a lot of people would agree with me on this. Over the past couple of uh, over the past couple of weeks, I've gotten oh, what a great time the 2017 season must have been as a, as a Bills fan. And don't get me wrong, it was fantastic. Breaking the drought was something that I know I'll never forget, and I know you at home will never forget either. But people forget what a roller coaster ride the season was, uh, even just starting with game one all the way through game 16 and then obviously into Jacksonville. There were a lot of ups and downs throughout the season. You can look at the end and say, okay, great, they ended the 2017 drought or the 17 year drought in 2017. But really, it was a roller coaster ride. And I think people need to realize that and remember kind of all the hip- hiccups that came along the way. A team that started off uh, four and two. Then got, went to five and five. Then started Nate Peterman, Tyrod Taylor on the bench. We were all over the national media uh, in the 2017 season, even before the drought was broken. So we're going to look at that. But one of the biggest things that I have people keep on asking me is, what are the, what are you expecting for 2018? And honestly, that's what we're going to try to figure out here today. Uh, I'm trying to set expectations for this team every year. I do that. Okay, what is the record of this team going to be? Are we going to make it to the playoffs? Are we going to get into the playoffs? What are our expectations going into this season? Now, I know it's early. It's very, very early to be setting this. Uh, we haven't even gone through training camp. We haven't seen any of the quarterbacks. But you know what? There's always time to put expectations on a team. Now, I've seen already in the two early mock drafts from Todd McShay has the Bills picking first overall in the next in next year's draft. Obviously, Todd McShay with very low expectations for this Bills team. And what we're going to try to figure out is where do you put them? Because I think it's a wide range. You're going to see a lot of those. People who think the Bills are going to be really bad. And then people who think the Bills are going to be really good and build off of that playoff season. Honestly, I mean, it it depends on a lot. Obviously, the place you got to start is with the quarterback position. Still a question mark. One of the biggest question marks just solved uh, just a couple of weeks ago with the Bills drafting Josh Allen. But now there's three quarterbacks on this roster. Does J- Josh Allen get the ball in game one? Is it A.J. McCarron? Does somehow Nate Peterman figure it out? I have no idea, and that's going to be figured out over the summer. I'm interested to see who you guys think is going to be the week one starter as of right now. I have no idea, and I don't think you really have any idea at home. But you know what? One thing I do like is the Bills are in a good position uh, with three possible quarterbacks who can start, are they all uh, the best quarterbacks You know, for this team? Not exactly sure, but it's going to be interesting to see who they go with in week one, and that's obviously where you need to start with the expectation. Who's going to be the quarterback? We've been seeing, especially of late in last year's draft, starting with Mitch Trubitsky, um, you know, teams, they give the ball to their veteran. It lasts about five weeks, and then that new rookie that they just drafted comes out and they put them into the starting lineup. Uh, saw that in Chicago, like I said, with Mitch Trubitsky. Uh, Deshaun Watson as well didn't get the ball in week one, but was soon enough the starter there for their teams. Is that what's going to happen in Buffalo? I sure I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we're already seeing AJ will start. Uh, I, I hope it's a QB competition. I hope it's that there's two good quarterbacks and they can't decide. What a great problem we would have in Buffalo if we had two good quarterbacks that both can start week one. That would be fantastic. That is best case scenario if that's what's going to take place. Uh, I don't know about A.J. McCarron. A.J. McCarron has so many question marks around him. Obviously, I hope that he's fantastic. I hope that Josh Allen, I hope that A.J. McCarron's so good that Josh Allen is just on the bench for for the entire first season as a Bills. I hope that's the, the case. I don't think that's going to be the case, but we'll see what happens. It's going to be a battle, and you hope that it's a good battle because that's only going to make Josh Allen better in the long run. So 
expectations are going to be tough. And then the thing when it comes to Josh Allen, you can either – it all depends on where you look. It's uh, You can either find some really good things about Josh Allen or you can find some really bad things about Josh Allen. Uh, obviously, the accuracy is the issue. You know that as Bills fans. Uh, but I remember, I've, once again, I've never really seen a player where some people think he's going to be amazing and some people think he's going to be absolutely terrible. I have no idea. It really all depends on where you look. Only time will tell what's going to happen with Josh Allen in Buffalo. Obviously, we're all in on Josh Allen here as Bills fans. But that's where you got to start with the 2018 expectations. Who do you think is going to start? What's going to happen at the quarterback position? Now, this defense, now to the other side of the ball, the defense was was pretty good in 2018. Uh you know, a lot of turnovers were a big part of why the reason, the reason the Bills got to the playoffs. Definitely wasn't on the offensive side of the ball. It was on the defensive side. Are they going to continue that there? There is still some turnover going on. We'll see what happens. Are they going to pick up right where they left off? I Once again, not exactly sure. I sure hope so. Honestly, my expectations for this team is sitting around probably 8-8. Uh, eight and eight. And we'll go from there. That's where I'm going to set the bar. I'm not going to go too high. I know people are going 10 and 6, 11 and 5, building off that 9 and 7 season from last year. And like I said, I know people who think they're going to go 5 and 11. The Bills are going to be interesting to see where the experts put them in as uh, where they're going to be for their 2018 season. I think the defense, I don't think there's any reason to think the defense is going to come down from last year. Pretty much all the same players are coming back. And then on top of it, uh, adding some in the draft. A, I, I think it's going to be pretty much the same team that you see. And now give Sean McDermott another year with his defense. I only think they're going to improve. I sure hope so, but we'll see what happens. I don't think there's any reason they're going to come down. The question marks come on the offensive side of the ball. You're going to have a new quarterback there. He has nobody to throw to. I'm seeing Dez or Decker in here. Honestly, anybody at this point. I don't understand how we don't have another wide receiver on this roster. Obviously, Calvin Benjamin there, but is Zay Jones going to come and be the two-man. I definitely wasn't impressed with him in his rookie season. Now, hopefully in the sophomore campaign, he can come in and show uh, and show that he's well improved and is going to improve in 2018. But I don't think there's anything that he showed into in, in, in the season that really points to him being the next big thing for the Buffalo Bills. It's a little bit concerning. But if there's one thing, if there's one position that always surprises me and – players come out of nowhere. It's a wide receiver position. You can go grab a seventh round pick. Remember Stevie Johnson uh, was a late round pick as well. You can grab those players, even free agents, and they come out and they are studs. Happens every single year. Now, am I I saying that one of those are on the Bills roster? I'm not sure. But one good thing, you don't always need to start the wide, wide receiver position. They can really come out of nowhere and take over for you, for your team. So that's the hope there. I think there's a whole lot more question marks in the offensive side than the defensive side, the same as last year. The defense, I know, surprised me. Uh, hopefully the same happens on the offensive side this year. Uh, it's going to be tough to set expectations. You're going to you're gonna get mad because somebody will come out and say the Bills are going to go 3-13 and 13 this year. We've already seen it with Todd McShay. Just prepare yourself because people are going to think this team's going to be bad. It happened last year. It happened the year before. I don't understand why people just don't realize this team is always in that 6-10 to 10 to 8-8 and eight range. doesn't matter who the coach is and who the players are. They always end up seemingly somewhere in there. Um, but somebody always will peg them at 5-11, and 3-13, and 4-12, and 12, somewhere in there. Just prepare yourself. And then somebody's going to come in and say they're going to go 11-5, and 12-4, and four, and you're going to be like, whoa, slow your roll there. Uh, definitely not going to be that good. We'll see. I think they're going to be another battle for the wild card spot. Uh, classic Bills in the hunt, as usual, as we like to joke about. Um, but don't, although 2017 was fun, I don't think it's realistic to expect playoffs once again, especially with a new quarterback. I think it's a little too high. As setting a number at 8-8 eight and eight and in contention, I think is a reasonable expectation for this 2018 Buffalo Bills team. Now, there's a lot more that needs to take place. We'll have a lot more going on over this summer and in the training camp and all that. A lot of this is going to change. But as of right now, for setting expectations, I think 7-9, and 8-8, eight and, eight, and in playoff contention, once December rolls around, I don't think is going to be um, 
the worst thing to happen. I'm seeing no way we do worse without Taylor and Dennison. Yeah, that that that's probably true. Uh, you would like to think the Bills are going to improve on offense, and hopefully, if they keep the same defense, uh, we'll be in that eight and eight, nine and seven range. But we'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm pegging them at eight and eight. That's my early expectations for the Bills team. Not too bad, but definitely not one of the best teams in the league. I still think they're two to three years away. And that's one of the best things about Sean McDermott making the playoffs and Brandon Bean. Finally, we can give somebody the time without breathing down their necks about making the playoffs. They made the playoffs. So even if they have an off year, even if they don't go six and 10, five and 11 with a rookie quarterback, at least we can lay off and say, all right, they showed us they can do it. Give them another couple years to figure this one out instead of running the guy right out of town when they don't make the playoffs in the first two years. And I'm not saying the Bills have made mistakes in the past by doing that, but it's nice to have a coach that you know is going to have some time here in Buffalo and put in the system that he wants. I think we're all big believers in Sean McDermott. I know I am. I want to see what he can do with this team, and even if that means – possibly an off year in 2018. I'm willing to sacrifice it for the long term of this team with Josh Allen and everything that's going on here in Buffalo. It's an exciting time. New quarterback. First time the Bills have drafted a quarterback in the top 10 in the in the new draft era. Uh, this, is, this is a new and exciting time. Soak it in. Just made the playoffs. People are high on the Buffalo Bills. We'll see what happens. We got a long way to wait till opening day in Baltimore next season. But before we get there, it's going to be fun. Just soak it in. There'll be a lot of cameras watching Josh Allen in Buffalo. Uh, we'll be we'll be in the national news. That that is one thing that is for sure. I'm going with eight and eight here early for my expectations for the 2018 season. Comment below and let me know what you think. If it's going to be higher, if it's going to be lower, if I'm right in the ballpark, who knows? But we're going to have to deal with a rookie quarterback. So. Anything is up in the air. Sometimes it works out really good. Sometimes it's a nightmare and causes for a long season. We'll see what happens. So moving on, we're actually going to – not moving on. We're actually going to go back to the 2017 season. And one thing I keep on getting is people talking about how great the 2017 season was, which don't get me wrong, it was great. Bills made the playoffs in heroic fashion. It was a whole lot of fun. But one thing I think people keep on forgetting – is the roller coaster ride of a season it was. It had a lot of highs and a lot of lows throughout the season. And you know as Bills fans that it it, it was craziness. Coming into this season, remember that this this organization was a dumpster fighter. Let's just flat out say it. We fired fired our head coach. We didn't have anything going for us. Had Sean McDermott in who coming in, who was unproven. The Pagulas. Everybody was on was on the Pagulas ca- case between the Bills being a mess. They had fired uh, both their general managers and their head coaches. Things things were terrible coming into this season. I remember uh, thinking this is going to be one of the longest seasons we are going to have here in Buffalo. Well, it turned out to be one of the best ones, and that's how unpredictable sports is. But that's what we came into this season with. So let's go just game by game. I remember coming into week one at home against the New York Jets. The Bills do get the 21-12 to victory, thinking if we don't win in game one of this season, we may not get another win for another four to five weeks. That's how desperate times were. Maybe that was a little overreaction on my part, but that's how I felt. Like, we need to win game one because who knows how long we're going to go before we get the next win. So remember that one, 21-12, week one at home, pretty easy victory over a bad Jets team. Then on to week two in Carolina. Remember that was the game that Zay Jones dropped the game-winning touchdown in the corner of the end zone? Uh, That one was a tough pill to swallow, one that the Bills probably should have won. They played terrible, only scored three points in that game. The offense couldn't sniff the end zone until the end of the game when Zay Jones dropped the ball. It was terrible, uh, that game in Carolina. If you guys remember it, 9-3. to So the Bills go to 1-1. and And then come back 1-1 and on the season. Denver Broncos come to town. Remember, Denver comes in 2-0. and Uh they're playing unbelievable football, one of the best team, best defenses in football, and the Bills completely shut them down. Getting the twenty-six to sixteen victory was one of the biggest surprises in Week Three for the entire NFL. Nobody really saw it coming. The Bills pretty much showing the Denver Broncos the way in that game. And then remember, on to Week Four, where they get the twenty-three to seventeen victory over the Falcons a huge upset in week four and that's when people start to look at Buffalo and go hmm 
is this team for real sitting at 3-1 and one, going into Atlanta and getting the win there? Remember that one that was a fluky fumble for a touchdown? The defense was fantastic getting uh, getting turnovers all, the entire game. Defensive won, defense won that game in Atlanta. So 3-1, and one, all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my goodness, this Buffalo team might actually do something sitting at three and one. We were feeling pretty good about ourselves after going to Atlanta and beating the defending NFC uh, NFC champions. And then, of course, the most Buffalo Bills thing happened with a bad Cincinnati team going to Cincinnati and losing that game 20 to 16. And remember, if you remember that game, it was brutal and it was in typical Buffalo fashion where they're coming in, they're so good, they're just playing awesome football playing a bad team and they come out and they lay a dud against Cincinnati and go to three and two on the season. Then they have the bye, come back and play Tampa Bay. Remember that Tampa Bay game? That was another crazy one where they got the late turnover to get the game winning field goal when 30 to 27 in that one bills were in control and almost blew it late, but then got a late interception and uh, a late field goal and won that game there. And then Oakland comes to town. I remember thinking, oh boy, here we go. Finally off the bye, got another victory sitting at 4-2. and two. Oakland coming to town. This is going to be disastrous. Well, they got the 34-14 to 14 victory. I don't know if you remember that game, but the Bills dominated in that one. Oakland looked like they had never touched a football. Temperatures were around like 40 degrees, and Oakland had not a clue what to do with themselves. So it was on to week nine where the Bills were sitting at 5-2. and two. Once again, feeling good about ourselves and then the Thursday night game happened. That one in New York, Bills lose 34-21, to a game that they must win over a bad football team. They get smoked. It was a disaster in the color rush game. They go to 5-3. and three. Then New Orleans comes to town. Bills lose 47-10. to 10. Now, remember... This talk about the roller coaster ride. A lot of highs. Now, now we're at the low, almost at the lowest of lows. Forty-seven to ten. New Orleans ran for four thousand yards in that game. I'm pretty sure the Bills couldn't stop a nosebleed. It was absolutely terrible. If you remember that game, New Orleans absolutely dominated in that game. So now we're at the low, and now we're about to reach the lowest point of the 2017 season. Bills travel to Los Angeles to play the Chargers, lose 54-24. to Of course, you know that one. I think everybody knows that one. You don't even need to be a Bills fan to know what happened in that game. It was the Nate Peterman five-interception game in the first half. Bills now at 5-5, five and five, losing 54-24. to And that was the lowest of the lows. It was embarrassing. Uh, Sean McDermott was embarrassed. The Bills were embarrassed. Definitely made the wrong call on Nate Peterman. It was it was a disaster. There's no other way. It was a nightmare scenario. It could not have gone any worse for the Bills in that one. So now we're at the lowest of lows, and where do you got to go from there? Only up. I would possibly make the argument that starting Nate Peterman in that game could have been the best thing that happened to the Bills. Um, not that I can really pinpoint to really anything that exactly took place, but after that, Bills seemingly turn it around, go to Kansas City, where they have been smoked by the Chiefs in past years, having lost three in a row. Kansas City has ripped out our our hearts before and taken it away from us, but not this time. They go in and get the 16-10 victory, another great performance by the Buffalo Bills defense in that one, and you're thinking, all right, back on track at 6-5, and five, going our home versus New England. Let's go out. Let's get get a big victory, a statement victory at, at home against the Patriots. Well, that doesn't happen. They get the 23-3 to loss, all New England, pretty much like every single game that we've ever played against the New England Patriots, and their record goes to 6-6. Six and six. So once again, that roller coaster ride, we get the win in Kansas City. Like, okay, back home against New England. Let's go get a big victory here and really make a playoff push. Doesn't happen. Get smoked by the Patriots. And then we come into the last four sitting at six and six. And I know it was going through my mind and probably a lot at home. Uh, oh, here we go again. Bills will probably just miss the playoffs, win, go two and two, and get a heartbreaking loss. Uh, the last one, that's probably what's going to take place. So that one, December 10th, that absolute snow game against the Indianapolis Colts, the 13-7 to victory in overtime, the one that was like the mysterious – uh, pass interference call on the uh, on the Colts in the end zone, which would have won the game for them. Uh, gets overturned. Bills win it in overtime in the snow game. Uh, that was a big one. 
That was a big one looking back on it, a big call that got overturned in favor of the Buffalo Bills. So they go to 7-6. and six. Then against Miami at home, a game I was at, and sorry if you're hearing an ambulance going by me right now, but now we're good. Uh, Miami, uh, they get the win at home against Miami, 24-16. to 16. Buffalo was in control most of that game. You're like, 8-6, and six. all right, we can make a run at this. Like, this might be the year that we can turn this around. Go to New England and get a big victory there and – you're set for the playoffs pretty much if you can just go beat the damn Patriots. Well, they go into New England and get smoked once again, 37-16 to and 8-7 and on the season. So now on this roller coaster ride, win two in a row, like, all right, feeling good. Now coming a little bit back down after New England and noticing that it's going to be tough and that the Bills don't control their own destiny going into Week 17, which was not a good feeling. Uh, now looking back on it in hindsight, it was the best thing that could have happened to us was not controlling our own destiny cause for one of the biggest party and celebrations on New Year's I think I'll ever have in my life. But we didn't know that going into the game. It was needing uh, needing two you know, victories uh, by, it was Tennessee. I, I forget the two teams, but in that scenario where we needed the two victories ended very, very early. Both of those teams were in control pretty much as, as the game started. And same for the Bills for that game in Miami. They did win 22-16, to 16, but it was pretty much all Bills that entire game. So a lot of us, I know I was, was scoreboard watching. And that Baltimore versus Cincinnati game started about, I don't know, was it 30, 30 minutes afterwards? So it was a little about, about a quarter behind on the overall. Um, and so you could see what happening, and you knew the one scenario was not going to work out. You needed Cincinnati to beat Baltimore. Uh, Buffalo gets the job done, of course. Kyle Williams scores a touchdown, which was awesome. And you're thinking to yourself, all right, we can do this. And at that point, Cincinnati had had the lead over Baltimore pretty much the entire game. And then just like that, Baltimore turns it back around. They take the lead, and it looks like Baltimore is going to get it. Cincinnati makes a late charge, and then Baltimore responds, and you're like, this, we're done. We're done. I remember I was in McFadden's in New York City. Um, this is not going to be our day. You know, It's just going to be another season. We don't just miss the playoffs by this much. I don't need to tell you what happened after that. Obviously, Andy Dalton throws a touchdown, and the Bills – uh, go on to the playoffs. So now on the roller coaster, we have just reached the absolute top of the 2017 season. And uh, Bills obviously go on to the playoffs to lose 3-10 uh, to 10 in Jacksonville. But am I the only one uh, who looks back on that game? And I, this might sound bad, but I, I, I'm not sad or disappointed at all. When I look back on it, I smile. I was just happy to be there, and that might be the wrong attitude. And I know that would probably make a lot of fans upset. But I was just happy to be there. It had been 17 years, finally got a playoff game. The team wasn't going to the Super Bowl and Tyrod Taylor at quarterback, okay? Wasn't going anywhere. It just It was nice just to soak it in and sit down on that, on that day and watch the Bills in a playoff game. It had been so long. I wasn't upset. I was just happy. And that's about, I don't know if other Bills fans agree with that, but it, looking back on it, it was just a great Great day. So that was pretty much the roller coaster season of 2017. I feel like people have forgotten how it went, how the Bills started off good, then lost two in a row, and then look, then regained, then lost three in a row. Nate Peterman game, then almost lose that snow game against Indianapolis, which would have crushed all of their dreams, of course, to win four of their last six games and make it into the playoffs. It was a roller coaster ride, and I I don't want people to forget that because it's important to remember. How crazy t- you're going to look back and t- oh, that was the year they broke the drought. Everything was, was great and easy, and it was not. It was not. There was a lot of times that adversity tested this Buffalo Bills team, and they fought through it, and I think it's a positive sign for the future going forward. So I hope you like to look back on the 2017 season. We're right in this part in, in May where there's not much going on. There's not much news. The draft is over, and – there's honestly not too much to talk about. You haven't really seen Josh Allen or anybody out there, um, you know, practicing and all that. So let's just look back and enjoy the good times. We haven't had many of them over uh, since 2000. So why not look back in that 2017 season and smile here on your Saturday afternoon? So just a little recap of what we went over today: expectations for the 2018 season. 
Uh, it's really, really early. It all depends really on the quarterback and what that offense is going to do. It's going to be interesting. I'm pegging them at 8-8. Eight and eight. I see a lot of you think they're going to go higher. I see some 9-7s, and sevens, uh, even some 10-6. and six. Obviously, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they go higher than 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, But I think it's a reasonable expectation to set them at 8-8 eight and eight and go from there. Obviously, once we get into training camp, we can adjust those predictions and expectations as we move on here. So we're going to wrap it up a little bit early here today. It's been a fun, fun season. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want me to talk about on next week's show. We're pretty open with not much going on in this NFL season, uh, but I appreciate everybody who t- tuned in today. And even if you catch this not when it's exactly live, comment. I'll be on there and answering some questions as we move forward. But that's all I have for Fandemonium today. Thank you for everybody who tuned in. I'm Joe Lorendi for Buffalo Fanatics, and of course, go Bills.